Let's be honest, Roller Coaster Tycoon World sucked dog shit. It looked awful, ran horribly, and lacked the boiled down essence of what made the Roller Coaster Tycoon series great. I bought it for $2.56 and still kind of felt ripped off. However, the rest of the franchise is well designed, fun to play, and a staple series for anyone interested in management sims. Let's talk about Roller Coaster Tycoon and what made it great. <laughs> Coaster Tycoon starts all the way back in 1997 with a Scottish game developer by the name Chris Sawyer. Prior to creating the Roller Coaster Tycoon series, Sawyer was somewhat of an established developer, creating games like Virus, Elite, and most notably Transport Tycoon throughout the late 80s and into the 90s. The latter Transport Tycoon, a game centered around managing a transportation company, was the most popular of his works and served as sort of a base for Roller Coaster Tycoon. While working on the sequel for Transport Tycoon, Sawyer started to really get into roller coasters and shifted his development into a game centered around amusement parks rather than logistics, in part as an excuse to visit various amusement parks and ride their coasters. Two years later, Roller Coaster Tycoon hit the shelves in March 1999 and promptly flew off of them, making it the best-selling game of the year. Almost overnight, the game became an icon, refusing to leave GameSpot's top 10 weekly sales for nearly two years and netting Chris Sawyer alone nearly $30 million in sales and prompting a lawsuit over $4.8 million in unpaid royalties a few years later. Pretty much everyone in the gaming scene at the time owned a copy and Roller Coaster Tycoon became a household name. Heck, I was even playing the game at like five years old. Roller Coaster Tycoon would also go on to receive an Xbox port in 2003, which wasn't really received as well as the original PC game, noting its lack of improvements or changes in the Xbox version. In October 2002, Roller Coaster Tycoon 2 released on the PC and was met with a comparable level of success. It didn't really top any charts that year, but still managed to be the 10th best selling game of 2002 and the 12th best of 2003. The difference between the original and the sequel is negligible, but a few changes were a major improvement in the quality of life. A dedicated bulldozer mode was added, there was now a dedicated track designing mode where players could save designs and be reused in other parks or exchange with other players. A scenario editor was added to Roller Coaster Tycoon which allowed players to create their own scenarios for the game with a chosen goal, a set of allowed rides and user created landscapes players had to work around. Rides also now had stats like velocity and lateral g's that could be assessed throughout the ride which helped designers troubleshoot problematic ratings. Overall, Roller Coaster Coaster Tycoon 2 was accepted as an upgrade to the original, but many people felt the lack of a 3D world and new features hurt its ability to stand out as a separate game from Roller Coaster Tycoon. So why were the first two games so successful? Really, it comes down to their design. First of all, the games are extremely simple. When it comes down to sim games, there's really two paths you can take, realism and simplicity. Sure, Roller Coaster Tycoon could have taken a more complex route with their game. For park admission, they could have created a climate system that changed the weather throughout the year, where it would affect how many people wanted to go to the park at certain times of the year, making completing scenarios by specific times of the year a lot harder. They could have also created a dynamic where during the warmer months, ice cream sales and drink sales could have spiked, and where coffee sales spiked in the cooler months. They could have also bled in the coaster design and a bunch of other things causing to evaluate your park on a month by month situation. Instead, they opted for a single climate that remained the same throughout the year with the only real time factor being rainfall. They could have also made coaster simulations more complex that would have made them a lot harder to build and would have required a lot more testing before they launched. Instead, they chose to simulate them pretty well but fudge the numbers to be more forgiving to fun designs. One of the issues that a lot of sim games have is their over-reliance on realism and complexity. Sometimes they want to make their games as complicated and difficult to manage as possible so that players have to spend a lot of time practicing and experimenting and get their games to work properly. A lot of time this actually works pretty well and the games end up being great. However, it can also cause them to devolve into a situation where the majority of the gameplay becomes problem solving instead of management and expansion. I play City Skylines pretty often one of the things that always kind of annoyed me is the traffic system. Sure, if you play the game enough you can kind of get a feeling for it and the traffic doesn't really become an issue. However, a single issue can bring a large portion of your city to a halt and it's not always easy to find a solution. Plus, there's instances where the traffic AI just sucks. For an experienced or patient player, it's a non-issue. However, if you're new or impatient, it makes the game a drag to play. Roller Coaster Tycoon is built around having fun. Sure, the pathfinding system can suck at some points, which makes building wide paths really bad for your part. Sure, there are times where you do run into annoying issues that take a while to fix. However, the core gameplay is building and expanding. When you're waiting for cash to build up, you have an opportunity to optimize prices, run advertising campaigns, and manage finances to make the most money possible but most of the time you're deciding where to build a new coaster or where to expand the park so you can build more rides. The issues that come up are generally easy to resolve and don't really spend a lot of time on them. Most of the time you're building, planning, and designing, which is extremely engaging and isn't really tedious enough to get boring. Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 continued this design but moved to a 3D perspective and new management. This time around, Chris Sawyer took a step back from development, only acting as a consultant and Frontier Developments took the lead. Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 expanded on the design of the first two games, which if continued probably would have run stale. I mean, look at how similar the first two games were. If they continued incrementally improving the game with each iteration, it probably would have been considered stale. 
Both Mr. Tycoon 3 expanded on the scenario feature by adding VIPs, which required certain requirements to be met with their visit, and created a tiered system for completing the challenges. Usually the challenge requirements to move to a new scenario weren't completely impossible, making it easy to continue through the game, but the later goals were usually tricky enough that you could spend a lot of time in parks that you like. They also threw in a grab bag of new features like animal exhibits, pools through expansions, and firework displays to break away from the standard amusement park experience. Also added was the long sought after ability to ride your coasters, which was made available with the new 3D perspective. Honestly, I didn't really like Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 when it came out, but that was probably because I was playing on an aging e-machines PC with 256 megabytes of RAM that could barely play the game at a decent frame rate. Plus, the complexity of 3D building was just kind of lost on me, and even playing the game again for this video left me annoyed at times due to the little issues that come up with a non-standard way of building. Changing the terrain and connecting paths gets a little tricky, and I think my impatient mind back then just gave up on it. However, I found myself actually enjoying it more this time around, and it became a thing I kept going back to even when I didn't really need to find more gameplay. Still, Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 was significant to the series because it opened up a lot of room for creativity. The level of detail that you could place from the differences created with the day and night cycle and the custom assets that you could throw in the game haven't really been matched in previous titles, and the game stands as probably the most open Roller Coaster Tycoon game in this franchise. The game does have some minor issues and the graphics really haven't aged well for being a 15 year old 3D game, but nonetheless, it's a good game. Honestly, it was a nice scheme to round off the series, adding in a handful of much desired features and bringing the series into the 3D world. Throughout the life cycle of the series, a handful of spin-offs were created to service different devices like the Nintendo DS and mobile phones, but I decided not to cover them in the name of time. Plus, honestly, I didn't feel like they were part of the canon franchise and not worth bringing up outside of a small footnote. Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 seemed like it was going to be the end of the main series of games. Other theme park games like Park Attack, Thrillville, Planet Coaster seemed to pick up where Roller Coaster Tycoon left off, and while many of the fans were wanting an addition to the series, the fervor behind the franchise died down quite a bit. Interest would pick up every now and then at the rumors of a new game, but most of the news ended up being those spin-offs or were forgotten about over time. There was still an active fan base behind the Roller Coaster Tycoon game and still is to this day, mostly focused on Roller Coaster Tycoon 2 and the related Project Open RCT, but after years of really nothing coming out, people took the series as kind of dead. Then Roller Coaster Tycoon World came out. If I could describe how this game relates to the rest of the series, I'd put it like this. It took all the design elements that made Roller Coaster Tycoon great, removed them, and then replaced the scraps that were left. The game runs like trash even on good computers, and the extra horsepower doesn't result in a game that really even looks good. The game is glitched to hell. Every mechanic in the game is so overly complicated to the point of tediousness. The initial scenarios are tutorials that take forever to complete, and the attempts to relate to the younger generations come off as if they were designed by aging boardroom execs with the complexion of Miracle Whip. Why do we need to place expensive stalls to hire janitors? Why does it take an hour of work to even have the opportunity of building a roller coaster with the words roller coaster in the title? Why does the grid structure path for building suck? Why are there social media influencers even in the game, and why do they always search for shit like types of food and souvenirs that have literally nothing to do with theme parks. And the general trend of the entire entertainment industry just picking up any old piece of work that had any sort of success in the past and reanimating its lifeless body to suck any bit of cash left in it, Roller Coaster Tycoon World was probably the worst that I've dealt with in the recent history. Really, it sucks. Overall, the Roller Coaster Tycoon series, excluding the last one, was great and stands out as a memorable piece of the 2000s gaming culture. Its uncomplicated design and focus on engaging gameplay made the first two games incredibly fun to play. Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 expanded on those design concepts, brought the franchise into the 3D realm and offered a level of detail and creativity that rounded off the series well. Even though the most recent Roller Coaster Tycoon game sucks shit, the rest of the series is fantastic and definitely worth picking up for a nostalgia trip. Thank you guys for watching and if you enjoyed the video go ahead and give it a like, do whatever, subscribe, peace out.